he has got the Young Physicist Award also from India government. So right now focus on his talk, but lunch time. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's thank. Thank you. Thank you. How to do the Physicist uh, Professor Park? So I would assume that you know the basics of cosmological scenario, both theory and observation. Can I assume that thing? Oh, that's it. And in case you, you find anything difficult or hard to understand in my talk, please feel free to interrupt me anytime and ask questions. Okay. So I just try to give you an overview of what is going on in today's uh, research, uh, which in uh, cosmological research, which uh, is basically an overlap of theory and observation. So you need to know theory, as, as from Sumira's talk you have already heard about. Oh, hi Amitabh. Hi. Oh, nice to see you. Okay. So as I was telling them, I was here in your department one year back. Okay, so he was the host for that meeting. Okay, that's right. So what I will try to do over here is that I will try to give a broad overview without going into much technical details. I will try to give you a broad overview of theory and observations in the cosmological side. And as you are hearing for the last few days, that cosmology evolves, cosmology basically, cosmology evolved as a theory, theory first subject, but for the last 20, 30 years or so, it has become observation first subject, which needs lots of data analysis and all these things. So you need to know theoretical models. First of all, you have lots of data which are coming. You expect lots of data to come in near future. And you have background theory, you have background models. So what you need to do as a cosmologist it too is to fit those data with observing with your background theory. Okay, so you need to do the moderating. What you need to do in order to do that, you have your data, you have your raw data, data coming from telescopes. So you need to analyze the, that data, extract out physics using statistical and mathematical techniques. And then whatever physics you have extracted out, you need to build based on background FRW cosmology you have already heard of, based on that. You need to build up your theoretical models in order to explain those things and you can further forecast what you basically expect to see in your future. This is how research in cosmology is going on for the last say 100 years or so, so to say. And you have heard about little bit about inflation, little bit about dark matter, little bit about dark energy, cosmological constant, all these things. Okay. So in this talk, my job is much more simple because you have already heard about those basic things. So what I will try to do is that, as I said, I will try to give you a broad overview of cosmology research. And I will try to focus on this aspect that in order to do research in cosmology, you need to know both theory and observation. So you need to have a handle of theoretical model building as well as analysis. Okay. And I will try to basically come to the overlap thing with the analysis. How you can basically corroborate your theory with observation. So this is the basic time. Is it clear to everybody? Okay. And as I said, please feel free to interrupt me anytime if you have any questions. Because we don't have any goal, we can stop anytime. Okay, so we just move on for this next uh, two hours or so. Okay, 
So let me start. As I said, we don't have any goal. But in order to move on, this is the broad outline of my talk. Okay. So in the first lecture, we'll mostly focus on inflation. You've heard about inflation a little bit, right? You know about inflation. Okay. So as I, 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 I'm still I'll, I'll do a brief recap of that. Okay. So I'll start with inflation. I'll discuss what we mean by inflation, why it is required. Inflation you have already heard about in newspapers. Like you know inflation in market. But this is not about market, this is about <laughs> inflation in our business. Okay. So I'll discuss a little bit about inflation. And then I'll discuss the observation side. As I said, cosmology is an overlap of theory and observations. So I'll discuss the observation side, which you have already once again heard about. Cosmic microwave background observation based on two major telescopes. You have lots of other telescopes as well, which are already running, which will come into effect in the near future. But I'll mostly focus on two observations, two telescopes. One is called Wilkinson Microwave and Isotropic Probe, and other is called Planck. Okay. So based on that, I will try to explain what we see. Okay. And whatever we see, how we can extract out physics from that, and throw some possible questions to the theoreticians, so that the theoreticians will try to explain those questions based on your background in FW cosmology by model reading. Okay. So this is the target. And this is the third target, the test of inflation in predictions. So whatever questions we have, what are those questions, what are those predictions, and how we can test those things. Okay. So you have your background theory from where you will predict some things. And you have your models, yes, sorry, you have your data, cosmic microwave background data, which is coming. Okay. So now what I will try to do is to corroborate these two things. As I said, you have your theory, you have your observation. We will try to corroborate, we will try to confront these two things and extract out physics. Okay. So this is the next part, status of present day inflationary models. Okay. So this is broadly, my target is to, is to uh, wind up this thing in the, in the first lecture and then move on to the next part, which is dark energy. And I am sure you have heard about dark energy several times in this program. Okay, starting from the uh, from the first day and in Suryan's talk, in the junior's talk, so many times they have about dark energy, and that has actually made my life much simpler. Because I have assumed that you know dark energy. So what I try to do is once again, since my starting point was cosmic microwave background radiation, which I will discuss a little bit in this course. So I will discuss what I mean, what are the signatures of dark energy that you get from C and B. Then I'll move on to other observations. I'm sure you have heard about those observations uh, in this program, but still, once again, just to recapitulate, I'll discuss in my own language what are the other observations from where you can get, get indications of dark energy. And then the basic question I try to answer is are these two different observations, one from CMD, one from other observations, is there concordance or is there any conflict? Okay, so this is the basic question I try to answer. Okay, because you have got only one universe, so whatever you have from different observations, you need to explain those things by a simple background model. Okay, so are these data concordant? Are these data going hand in hand, or is there any conflict based on your background? So this is the question I will try to address a little bit. Even if this will be a little bit technical, as I said, don't try to go into the details of everything. I just try to give you an overview of all this. Okay, so just don't and try to skip those technical details and just take a flavor of what is going on. Okay, and, and then if I have time, then I will discuss some new avenues, but I suspect that I won't have time. Okay. And I'm happy to finish before that. Okay. So as I said in this first lecture, I'll mostly focus on inflation part. Okay. So let me start. You have heard about these things, right? Oh, that's it. Right. Okay, so as you know, the Big Bang standard Big Bang cosmology, which was basically proposed by once again Friedman Robertson Walker, and the idea is that universe started from a bang and then universe expanded. Okay, so it is uh, it, it it explains your observable most of the part of the observable universe pretty well, but then there are several puzzling features of standard Big Bang cosmology in the very beginning. Okay, what are the puzzles you have already heard about? So I'm not going to the details. What is you know you know these things right? You know little bit about all these things. You may not understand everything. One is the horizon. Should I, should I discuss or should I skip this? Okay. Uh, monopole problem is okay. So I, I can say okay. So let, let me just discuss this very, very, very Okay. So basic puzzles of standard Big Bang cosmology is 
horizontal problem, flatness problem, monopole problem, structure formation problem, and there is some more. Okay. The horizon problem is basically, so uh, let me start with flatness problem, you know, from observation that universe is spatially flat. Like you start with FRW model, Friedman, Robertson, and Elkan metric, there you have a uh, spatial curvature term K, right? So along with that case, so if you have that K, you can attribute a density term to that. You have read all this, thing, right? Omega curvature term. Okay. From observation, you get that omega curvature is almost equal to 1, almost equal to 0. Okay, but from theory, what are the values curvature k can take? This is 0, plus 1, or minus 1, right? For maximal asymmetric rate. So the question is that even if it, it can take 3 values, why at all it takes particular values? Zero? You don't have any explanation for this thing from standard effect cosmology. Okay, next problem is horizon problem. The size of horizons. You know, I'll come to the observation part later on. Okay, our observation basically, since you have already heard about cosmic microwave background radiation, cosmic means it deals with the largest uh, possible structure, uh, I mean, I should say structure, whatever you see, the largest possible scale of, of our universe. Okay, microwave means the, 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 the wave you are basically catching in your telescope that has a wavelength of microwave order. Okay, how much is that thing? Roughly 0.2 millimeter. Okay, and background means it basically forms, I am not coming, going into the details of those things. Okay, it basically forms the forms basically the background of whatever you see. This is the background. Photons, I mean, you have heard about all this thing, right? You have in photons and baryons, the decouple, you have heard about these things. The decouple and then photons form the background. So you are basically trying to catch those photons using CMB telescopes. Okay. And you get what you got. I mean, the, the, this, there is a fascinating story and uh, probably you have heard about this thing, about Penzias and Wilson when they first discovered CMB. Have you heard about this thing? No. Okay. So in 1965, what happened is that these two guys called Penzias uh, and Wilson, their target was to probe something else. What they found is, they found a very misery noise. At first they thought it is a noise. Okay, and they tried to throw it at This is disturbing. But then suddenly they got curious and they tried to analyze that noise. Is there any pattern on that noise? And that you see from where basically uh, the profound scientific information comes from. Whatever they thought as noise, they tried to analyze that thing by plotting their intensity versus frequency. Can I have a pen? Yeah. Oh, thank you. So just the, the first of all, they tried to throw it away, and then suddenly they got curious. And they tried to find out if at all there is any pattern. Okay. So whatever data they found, they tried to plot the intensity versus frequency. Okay. Intensity versus frequency. Or or it's the reverse. It's the reverse or yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's how you learn and then forget. <laughs> intensity versus frequency. No, you're not the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, frequency was nice. Frequency was an intensity. So you will learn, unlearn, and then once again. That's good. Okay, and what they found is a pretty, pretty interesting thing. They found a pattern which looks like this. And this is pretty long, well known. This is your black body spectrum, right? So the conclusion is that, and this from, from this black body spectrum, you can use your uh, theoretical formula and all these things to find out the temperature of this black body. Right. So the first conclusion is that from this black body means it is thermally stabilized. Okay. So what about they found that basically tells you your universe at the largest scale is thermally stabilized. And you can find out the typical temperature. The temperature today is 2.725 Kelvin. The temperature around that time is, you know, you heard about red sip, right? So the temperature around that time is around 1100. So the red sip is around 1100. So this is 2.725 Kelvin into 1100, so roughly around 3000 Kelvin. Okay, but forget about the data. The major conclusion is that the temperature you find out is same in all directions. So temperature is same in all directions means your universe is thermally stabilized. What do you what do you data tells you? But from background uh, cosmological theory. What you have in your hand, that cosmology, you cannot readily explain, I'm not going to the details, you cannot readily explain why during this short while, very short while, 
your universe will get thermodestabilized. How will photon basically exchange energy among them and get thermodestabilized? They need some time, right? Because you know the maximum speed of light or maximum speed of uh, any signal is limited. So during this time, they need to exchange energy, interchange, react to it. I mean, basically, uh, they need to have some conversation with each other, exchange energy, and get thermodestabilized. Now, during this short while, in the Big Bang cosmology framework, you cannot readily explain why that are thermodestabilized, but from observation you get this is actually thermodestabilized. And then this 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 was something that came in 1965, and then for the last 40, 50 years or so, there are lots of observations. First Kobe came, and then WMAP came, and then Carl came, and then there are lots of other observations going on. We are basically going to improve and improve this scenario, but the background physics remains as it is. Okay, so in your universe, you have heard about this homogeneous and isotropic. These two words. There is no preferred position, there is no preferred direction. So your universe is homogeneous and isotropic at the largest scale. This is convinced from observation. You have your FRW model, but in your background cosmology scenario based on FRW model, you cannot really explain that thing. Next is monopole problem, as someone asked. I need to explain that 